Hey guys, so today I'm doing an antique bronzed sort of smoky eye look using a loose shadow from the company Furless and using the Smoky Obsessions palette from Huda Beauty. As always, I'm starting by applying the Soft Ochre Paint Pot from MAC and I'm just blending that over the lid with my fingers, concentrating mostly on the lid and then sort of blending it up in towards the crease area. And because I'm using a loose shadow, I didn't set the paint pot because I want it to stay a little bit tacky so that that loose pigment has something to stick to. For applying my transition shade, obviously I'm going into the Huda Beauty palette and I'm using the Sigma E40 brush. For the sake of giving a real sense of how long I spent blending all of this, I have sped up the playback, but I haven't really cut out large chunks like I usually do, so feel free to let me know in the comments whether or not you prefer seeing less of the blending or if you like it this way where you can see more of the blending. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Do you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? I hope so. Then I'm going in with a blending brush from Furless Cosmetics. Can you tell that I just received my uh, Black Friday order from Furless? Uh, I'm very stoked because these brushes are the shit. They are so good. So as you can see, I just spent a lot of time blending and flipping that brush back and forth to build up the crease and then blend it back out. I didn't really pick up an awful lot of extra product, I just really wanted to smoke it out so that it wasn't a harsh line at all. So this is my concern, is that I don't want this to be boring, but at the same time I really wanted to show like an accurate depiction of the blending process, I suppose. Uh, so your wish is my command, let me know, does this bore the shit out of you or do you enjoy seeing the full process? Then I just went back with the E40 brush just to make sure that there are no harsh edges. Harsh, harsh, <laughs> wow. The word harsh sounds really fake. I can't say it. It's late. Oh, Furless, your packaging rocks my socks. This is the loose shadow in the shade Sinister. I'm not sure why I thought it was important to show you that it comes with a cap, but uh, there you have it. And awesome pigmentation coming at you in three, two, one. Look at that. It's gorgeous. To apply the loose shadow, I used my 220 brush from Makeup Forever. It's just a really flat, precise brush. And at first I went in with the pigment dry. Word to the wise, just be careful how much you apply at any given point because it will create fallout because it is loose. Uh, but if you go in with just a little bit and really tap off the excess or spray it with the MAC Fix Plus as I did here, you're pretty much fine. Um, I had a tiny bit of fallout with this, but nothing, nothing to write home about. Then I just took that blending brush again with no additional product on it and just made sure that the um, crease there was nice and blended out. And then I took this behemoth of a brush, which is actually lovely, it's so soft, um, but it was probably overkill for the sake of getting rid of the little bit of fallout that I had. Uh, and that's a pretty face. And now for the black eyeshadow, I used the uh, Small Definer brush. I don't know, I just saw it on the screen. I totally forgot what it's called. From Makeup Geek and just patted that black shadow in. I really tapped off the excess because I didn't want black eyeshadow all over my face. And really just sort of sketched out where I wanted it and then started the blending process from there. This brush is a new addition to my collection of brushes but it's fast becoming a favorite it's so nice and small uh, but still really soft and fluffy so it blends things so well and I just I really I like the size of it because 
I don't jack up my makeup by blending it too far up or too far down. It's just a nice little beast. And I like this blending brush too. It's so soft. It's sort of the same shape as my um, Sigma E25 brush, but it's just that much softer. And I find when I have a look where I have to do a lot of blending, the softer the brush, the happier I'm going to be. Otherwise my skin starts to get a little irritated and upset at what I'm doing to it. I am just gonna throw this out there for the sake of doing it. I do have an affiliate link for Furless Cosmetics. I thoroughly recommend their blending brushes. I'm not a big fan on their liner brushes. I have used them in the past. Their face brushes are fantastic. Their loose pigments are phenomenal and you get so much product. I'll link it below. It saves you 20%. I receive a 10% commission. Use it, don't use it, totally up to your discretion, but wanted you to have the info. All right, moving on. I blended out the lower lash line with this brush from Lottie. I believe I got it in an Ipsy bag because I have no idea where to buy Lottie, but I actually really like this brush too. And then I just went back because of all the blending. I wanted to rebuild that bronze shade, so I'm just patting a little bit extra on top, as you can see. And adding some more black and blending that out as well because what would a smoky eye look be without a crap ton of blending? I often reach for highlighters for my inner corner highlight instead of eyeshadows just because the highlights in the name and they work well and it was close by, truth be told. To complete the eyes, I used my favorite liquid liner, the Eye Booster from Physicians Formula. I also used the Givenchy 4-in-1 mascara. I still can't figure out what the 4 are, um, but it is a great mascara. It's got a weird wand, but it is a really great mascara. And for the waterline and tightline, I used the Physicians Formula Insta Ready Gel Liner. Uh, and was very impressed with the pigmentation. It was my first time using it. So there's the finished look. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video. Until then, just be a decent human being. Bye guys.